Hi everybody, welcome back. My name's Claire. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I'm on my same theme of iridescent bases, Dutch pours with an iridescent base. Um, and the colour I've chosen this time is this beautiful colour. So this is iridescent violet blue. It's just a really bright, warm, rich, um, pinky colour, absolutely gorgeous colour. So I've chosen some purpley colours um, to go with with this, so I'll show you in a second. Um, this is going to be very different from my previous Dutch pours. It's going to be a diptych, which means it's made up of two canvases. Um, and I'm going to do something quite similar to my previous pour, which instead of um, laying the colours down in a straight diagonal line like I'm used to, I'm going to do a swirl. So it's going to look totally different to anything I've done before. Um, so I'm really excited to get started. So let me show you the colours I'm using. So here are my colours. So as I said, the base colour is um, Pepio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Violet Blue. And this is the colour. Absolutely gorgeous, iridescent, sparkly colour. Then I've got three pe other Pepio colours. I've got Iridescent Silver, Payne's Grey and Iridescent Blue Black. And then my favourite Pearl White, which is De La Rowney. And then two Montmartre colours, so purple and magenta. And I just feel that these colours, I think, are going to work quite well with this. This is such a bold, bright colour. I almost feel like we needed slightly more muted colours, so some dark colours and, and neutral colours, but then some tones that will just will match as well. Um, so let's get started. So I've got two 29 by 42 centimetre canvases here. So I've got about 42 by about 60. Um, now they are slightly different heights, these canvases, and that's because I have just spent ages levelling them. So I've been pulling the push pins up and down to get each individual canvas levelled. So I'm not too worried at the moment if they're slightly, one slightly higher than the other. It doesn't matter as long as each individual canvas is level, which it is. So first of all, I'm going to pour the base on. Um, so I'm going to pour some paint in the centre and then I'm just going to blow it out with the hairdryer. are now covered so what I'd like to do is make my swirl now or plan my swirl so what I've actually got here is just I've got a piece of white wool I'm just wrapping it around my hand and I'm going to place this on the canvas just as a guide to try and work out <clears throat> excuse me where I would like my swirl to be so I'm good I'm putting it on just as a guide and then I will take it off once I've put my first layer of colour down. Now the only problem with wool is it's fluffy. So I'm hoping it's not going to leave any fluff in my paint. Maybe I should have used string.
good thing about this is I can I can put it down and I can just fiddle with it. So the first colour I'm going to put down is the Payne's Grey. So I'm going to just try and pour this roughly around the shape of this wool. Great, so now I'm going to lift, try and gently lift this wool up. Great, yep, happy with that so far. Let's get rid of that. Um, and then I'm going to be adding in some extra lines of paint. So it's going to look a little bit, it will be a little bit fossil like with the paint going in all directions. So next I'm going to add some silver. Right, that is so much paint. There's just a couple of slightly larger gaps. So I think I'm just going to add, let me just think. I'm just gonna add just a little bit more in these quite large gaps. So my plan will be to blow from the centre here and around. So I'm constantly going in this direction towards the edge. So I'm going to try and blow from the edge of the colour in. Try not to pick up the pink. I might pick up some of the pink, but it, I'm going to try not to. So wish me luck because this is a lot of paint to waste if this goes wrong. Just seeing a bit of fluff. I'm happy so far. I'm not happy with the centre, but I can sort that. Look at these colours. And the cells that are popping up are just gorgeous. 
I love this very intense dark band around the center and then it just it just floats away so I think what I'm going to do now is separate the canvases a little bit and just work on this something in there um, I need to sharpen this up there's a lot of paint here I think there's probably too much but I'm, I'm well it's too late now <laughs> I'm going to work on this to see what I can I can do this is just perfect really happy with this edge and these are really really happy I'm just going to blow around a little bit around all some of these edges Wow, I'm done. That was so tough. The um, the peak here of the wave of the spiral. Wow, that took ages. I as you probably saw, I I put paint on. I blew it around. I scraped it off. I added more paint. I scraped it off. It took me ages. Um, but I've got I think what I'm really pleased with what I wanted, which was a quite sharp point. Um, and then I just wanted it to evenly span out, spread out and get bigger and bigger. Um, the colours are amazing. I absolutely love them. Oh, just focusing. Um, they work so well together. I was slightly hesitant about the grey because I think grey can make paintings look quite dull sometimes. But you can just see it. Oh, I actually know that's not the grey. That's the iridescent blue black. Oh, that's interesting. So I think that's really blended well with the um, the silver. Um, so some really pretty cells, um, similar to my last spiral, not loads of cells, but the cells that are there are really, really pretty. There's some beautiful ones down here. Um, can you see the sparkle? I don't know. I don't think you really can. The whole thing is beautifully shimmery, um, and sparkly. Oh, there you go. You get a bit of a sense of it there, I think. Um, some gorgeous lacing. The colours are just so rich and warm. Pinks and purples um, with a hint of bluey, silvery grey. Really, really pleased. Um, it, it was a bit of a gamble. Um, I hope it dries like this. Oh, I just need to, that little bit there is creeping down. I need to just blow that back in. Um, it's a bit of a gamble, but I think it's worked. Um, it was tricky. It was more difficult than I was expecting, but I think it's worked. So... Um, fingers crossed it dries okay and I'll, I'll be back once it's dry so it's now dry I love it I'm so happy with it um, the composition I'm really pleased with I actually like the slightly more sensual wave the last one I did it was at more uh, off to the one side and I really like that I love it over two canvases because it just it breaks it up I really really pleased um, let me take you in for a close-up. You might notice um, around here it looks a little bit patchy and up here um, and that's because the I think the pink wasn't quite um, thick enough so what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit more paint on and you'll notice if I show you the edges the edges haven't covered well at all so it's no problem I will just dab some more of the paint on um, and let it dry and you'll never know um, and the same up there. Um, there must be some some transparency to the pink. Um, the colours are amazing. So, so happy with them. Um, you get a real sense of the blue. That's the blue there, the blue iridescent blue-black. If I try and show you the iridescence, I think when it was wet, I couldn't really see the blue-black. 
there there's a lot of it there but now it's dried you I can really see it really pleased with it and the silver and the white they they just shimmer so well and obviously the pink the base is shimmering so nicely um, I'm so happy with all these edges because it's a round it's a round curve but it's a really irregular edge and I love that I'm really happy with that can you just see all the waves all the you can see all the the way the paints layered all the different colors over the top of each other um, a few cells so there were some cells there and I thought it might they might fall over off the edge but they haven't they've dried exactly where they are which is good. I think my paints are slightly thicker than some um, people use for Dutch pours. So I tend to find that they don't tend to, um, bits tend to fall off over the edge as much as it dries. As often as it dries, it spreads out further and then just drips. Um, and then I'm really, really pleased with the center. I wanted quite a point, but I didn't want it to be too over the top, too dramatic. And look at that lovely edge there. So there it is. Let me know what you think. It is another crazy one, another mad one. Um, I've had so much fun doing it. Um, I'm not sure where I'm going to go next with this. Let me. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um, I'm definitely not done. I definitely want to do another spiral, another swell. Um, yeah, let me know. Um, thank you so, so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you like it, um, do hit the thumbs up button, the like button, that would be great. Great, take care everyone. Bye.